The topic of today's lecture is fluorescence spectroscopy and Kasha's rule. We have discussed many details in the previous lectures about vibrating transitions, the introduction to fluorescence, why it is important and today now we are moving to why how uh, spectroscopy process probably can have been developed yes this is our another topic of our unit fluorescence spectroscopy and kasha's rule In this lecture, you will learn about basics of fluorescence spectroscopy, Kasha's rule for fluorescence spectroscopy and their interpretation. Before uh, going into detail, first and most important question is, what is fluorescence spectroscopy? In the previous lecture, we have discussed what is fluorescence, how materials give fluorescence spectra. We know that certain molecules have the property to give fluorescence. Fluorescence is another property in which the molecules emit some wavelengths even after some time. The spectroscopy analyzes fluorescence from a molecule based on its fluorescence properties. It is a kind of luminescence is caused by a photon exciting a molecule. Whenever photon excite a molecule, it rays the molecule to an electronic excited state. Fluorescence spectroscopy uses a beam of light that excites the electron in molecule of certain compounds and causes them to emit light. That light is directed towards a filter and onto a detector for measurement and identification of molecule or change in the molecule. In fluorescence spectroscopy, we have a provision of light of various wavelengths. We strike those light on the molecule that we want to study. We have option, we have power to apply any particular wavelength. Whenever we apply the light on the molecule, the molecule emit light. This property is not possible for all the molecules. I am talking about those molecules that give fluorescence. The light is directed towards a filter to check which light is. We use a filter. First we use filter. Then it, we strike the list to a detector for measurement and identification of molecule or change in the molecule. Here, two peak graph is shown. Two peaks, two curves are there. Two curves are shown. 
One first curve blue curve is excitation spectrum and second is emission spectrum. We have plotted a normalized intensity with wavelength. The wavelength from 200 to 800. The first one blue spectrum is excitation spectrum. The peak that we are giving to excite the molecules. Second spectrum we obtain is emission spectrum. This is slightly shifted and mirror image, both are mirror image to each other. Interestingly, whenever we send the excitation wavelength, the energy emitted we obviously lesser energy and that is why it should be shifted towards the right side that is shown in the figure. Steady state fluorescence spectra are often when molecule excited by a constant source of light emit fluorescence and emitted photons or intensity are detected as a function of wavelength. A fluorescence emission spectrum is when the excitation wavelength is fixed and emission wavelength is scanned. Here, the thing that is interesting and important to learn, then we generally we use a particular wavelength for excitation. Excitation wavelength is normally the characteristics of the molecule that we use. We can get the idea of excitation wavelength using absorption spectra also. Now, we give this excitation wavelength, we with this excitation wavelength, apply this wavelength on the polyp molecule and the fluorescence emission spectrum is obtained and we can scan, we can scan over wavelength this emission spectrum. Um, a spectrum may have one or more peaks depends on the molecule. We have already discussed this. The spectrum gives the information about the wavelength at which sample will absorb. And so as to emit emission wavelength. And this is analogous to absorption spectrum, but it is a much more sensitive technique in terms of limit of detection and molecular specificity. That is why nowadays it is growing potential. Absorption can sense many things, but the, as far as limit of detection is concerned, or molecular specificity is concerned, luminescence or fluorescence is more useful than absorption. There is possibility that sometimes absorption may not give results because the concentration is in a very small ppm. There is one more difference between emission and absorption spectrum. In excitation spectra, is specific to a single emission wavelength are opposed to absorption spectrum. 
in which all absorbing species in a solution or sample is used. Exorption, excitation spectra is specific. Where in absorption spectrum, we have all wavelengths. Emission and excitation spectra for a given fluorospore are mirror image of each other. Typically, the emission spectrum occurs at higher wavelength than excitation or absorption. These two spectral lines, emission and excitation, are used to see how a sample is changing. Here, two examples are shown. In the first parallel in benzene, structure is molecule is there. The lower side we have used wave number, on the upper side we have used wavelength. And on the x-axis, on the left-hand side, extension coefficient, and on the right-hand side, fluorescence intensity. The absorption peak, three absorption peaks are there. So, in the same manner, we have three emission peaks, one, two, and three. That is why I am saying this is called mirror image. Generally, whatever is absorbed at different levels, it will be emitted at different levels also by some methods. In the second figure, conant sulfate in one molar H2O4 peaks are given. These are the examples to show emission peaks and how emission peaks are different than absorption peaks. The intensity of these peaks, emission peaks, depends on many parameters. Some of the parameters are temperature, concentration, interaction with other molecules. And this includes Quencher molecules, molecules, materials that involving energy transfer. Some fluorophores also very sensitive to solvent environment properties such as pH, polarity, ion concentration. So these type of studies can be carried out using fluorescence spectra. Fluorescence is a type of luminescence as we have discussed. This is caused by a photon exciting a molecule. The result is to an electronic excited state. And this brought about by absorption of photon in the singlet ground state, promoted to singlet excited state. As an excited molecule return to ground state this must emit a photon of lower energy and that is why we show this lower energy to the right hand side which correspond to lower wavelength than absorption photon this spectroscopy analyze fluorescence from a molecule based on its fluorescent properties Fluorescence is a type of illuminescence caused by photon exciting a molecule raising in the electronic. To study, to analyze fluorescence spectrum, we use a rule. That rule is called Kasha's rule. Kasha's rule is a principle in the photochemistry of electronically excited molecules and this rule states that the photon emission photon emission here photon emission means fluorescence or photo photofluorescence occurs in appreciable yield 
only from lowest excited state of a given multiplicity. This rule was given by Kasha in 1950. Very interesting rule. The photon emission occurs in appreciable yield only from lowest excited state of given multiplicity. Suppose you have excited state with multiplicity, then if you want to check, if you want to calculate process, then it should be effective, it should be more from the lowest state. Now try to understand this rule. Suppose you have two energy levels, E0 is the ground state and E1, E2 are the excited state. And you excite the molecule by giving energy H nu1. There are certain vibration levels also related with E0, E1 and E2. E0 is the ground state and E1, E2 close to each other, they are excited state. A photon with energy nu1 excite an electron of fundamental level. The energy E0 to excited level E1 either E1 or E2 or one on, or on one of the vibration sublevels. Vibration relaxation then takes place between excited levels. According to this rule, the fluorescence cannot be obtained from higher levels. Fluorescent, the dominant from is obtained from the lower level. So, the relaxation takes place between excited levels, which lead to dissipation of part of energy, taking the form of transition towards the lowest excited stable. Energy is then dissipated by emission of photon of energy H2. And after this, this allows the system to go back to fundamental states. So, the basic of this Quasha's rule implies here then if you have E2 and E1 both excite level, then dominant emission will be from E1. And from E2 to E1, they may go by different ways, dissipation or something. This rule is relevant in understanding the emission spectrum of excited molecules. Upon absorbing a photon from a molecule in its ground state, denoted by S0, singular state, depending on photon wavelength, excited. And this excited to any one of set of high electronic states. Normally, you can denote it by suppose S, Sn, n is greater than 0, so e, S1, S2 and so on. However, according to Kasha's rule, photon emission, fluorescence in the case of S, is expected in appreciable yield only from lowest excited state S1, since only one state is suppose there. An equivalent statement of this rule is that emission wavelength is independent of excitation wavelength. It means whatever the excitation wavelength is, the emission is dominant emission is always between the excited, lowest excited and ground. So this is not depend on excitation wavelength. This is very important fact. Normally, anybody can think of then 
whenever you increase the excitation energy you may have some changes but it is not the rule can be explained by frank condon factor for vibronic interactions for a given pair of energy level that differ in both vibration and electronic quantum number the frank condon factor expresses the degree of overlap between their vibrational functions the greater the overlap the quicker the molecule can undergo transitions from higher to lower level overlap between pair is a greater when two vibration levels are close in energy and this tend to be the case when vibration less level of the electronic states coupled by transition are close this frank condon principle can explain why they are moving towards lower before emission the degree of overlapping is responsible for this vibration functions in most of the molecules the vibration less levels of the excited states all lie close together so molecules in upper state quickly reach to lower state state as one before they have time to flows however the energy gap between s1 and s0 is greater so here fluorescence occurs since it is now kinetically competitive with internal conversion this is very important to learn exception to kasha's rule also there this arises when there are large energy gaps between excited states as in the previous slide we have accepted that this is due to closeness of excited states but suppose you have gap bit large gap between excited states suppose azulin it is an example the classical expression is that s1 and s2 states lie sufficiently far apart that fluorescence is observed mostly from s2 however recent research has put forward that this may not be the case and fluorescence is seen from s2 because of crossing and dimensional potential surface allowing very fast internal conversion from s1 to s0 here they are saying there is a possibility in such as like example azulin then s this is possible with from s2 not s1 and from s1 to 0 s0 it is allowing very fast internal conversion so there should not be any fluorescence whenever we talk about kasha's rule we must talk about a corollary of kasha's rule wavell law rule which states that the quantum yield of luminescence is independent of excitation wavelength this can be understood as a consequence of the tendency amplified by kasha's rule for molecules in upper state of to relax the low, lower excited state non radiatively again there are exceptions for example benzene vapor generally the quantum yield is independent of excitation wavelength we have also already discussed this as a consequence of kasha's rule in this lecture we have discussed fluorescence spectroscopy how it can be taken out what is emission spectra absorption spectra 
and how emission is explained the emission explained on the kasha's rule and of course we have discussed below rules also thank you